Hi there, welcome back to Simon Says. My name is Simon, and today I'm gonna to show you how to build custom dashboards in Home Assistant. So the way that we create dashboards in Home Assistant is we go down here to settings and we scroll down to dashboards. Now, you have a couple of options here. You can either allow Home Assistant to create the dashboard for you itself, which will just put all of the entities into the dashboard and it ends up being pretty messy, or otherwise you can actually go and customize it and add your own one at a time, which I think is the much better way to go. But I'll show you, let's just go test new dash. Okay, and we can give it an icon if we want to. Um, and we can say admin only if we want to only have limited access to it and show in sidebar, we'll select it up here. So we'll go create, there it is, there's the new dashboard, okay. Now we can either set that as default or we can leave it as a one of the dashboard selection. So let's go along here to the dashboard. Now as you can see, it has added all of my entities in there. So it's a huge mess, we really don't need that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to edit the dashboard and I'm going to say, start with an empty dashboard and take control. And there we go, we've got a blank canvas. So from here, I'm gonna show you how to add the standard cards within Home Assistant. In my next video, I will be showing you how to load hacks and then we can select other types of cards such as the mushroom card, which gives you some really nice extra graphical sort of functionality with the cards. But this one is all about the standard cards. So we go add a card. Now you have a couple of options. Um, the first one that's really good to use is the button. So say for example, we selected a button and you'll see there by default, it's selected a light for me. I could go down and I could search for any one of my other elements within Home Assistant or entities, but I'm gonna leave that at my desk light, okay. Um, so I'm just going to leave the name as it is. I could give it a custom name. Um, also, we could give it a custom height or a theme. I'm just going to leave it all it is at the moment. I'm going to say I do want to show the state. All right. And I can either have a toggle or a different types of actions. I'm going to leave this as a toggle and I'm going to go save. So what this is going to do now is this button will turn my light on and off. And as you can see, it changes color to show what it is. However, the limitation of a button is that if you've got a, a light that offers you different colors and different degrees of um, strength or of brightness, we actually want the light card. So I'm gonna go and add another card. This time I'm going to select the light card, all right. So I'm gonna allow to sit, uh, control that same um, button or that same light. And this time what we're going to do is you'll see now that I can turn it on and off, okay? But I can also control the percentage of brightness. Okay, so if we close that and we save it, I can now go in here, turn it on and off, but I can also select here. This is a new little slider that they've put in with one of the latest updates. And I can also go down the bottom here, I can select different colors or I could select different temperatures. So that's the benefit with a light that has got those multi, like an RGB light or a variable brightness light to do that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is show you how to create um, a graph or a gauge because a gauge is really cool for displaying information. So here we go is my gauge. So I'm gonna select one of those and it's picked up my mold indicator. Now I could go and select any of my other sensors that are offering me information from temperature, pressure, or anything that I've got there. So we'll leave it at that. This is a mold indicator that I've created in another video. And what we'll do here now is we, we can either have it as a straight graph. Now, if it is a percentage, it will default going from zero to 100. If it's something like a temperature, we might wanna select the minimum and maximum. So we might wanna say minimum of five degrees, maximum of 30 degrees, for example. Next thing we can do is we can say, display it as a needle, that's quite cool. And we can also define the severity. So we might say 25, green, 50 is gonna be yellow, and 75 is gonna be red. And we can save that. 
And as you can see, that's quite cool. It's now giving us a graphical indica indication. If I click on one of those, it actually shows you a graph, okay, which is quite cool. All right, so in order to start grouping these together, the best way is to actually use one of these grouping cards. So we could, for example, set a horizontal stack card and we can now go and search for cards. So I might want to put a number of gauges, for example. So say, for example, I want my disk use as my first gauge and my second gauge might want to be, for example, my, um, let's scroll down here. Say, for example, we want to look at um, disk free and the third one, for example, might be another gauge that we want to see as our, let's just see here. So if we want our third one, we want to have a temperature, for example. Oh, let's go there. Temperature, there we go. So we save that. And as you can see now, it's created multiple different gauges within one horizontal stack card. And once again, we can move that around the place. So another type of view we can have is we can select a, scroll down here, a media control. So for example, I've got a um, Amazon, I've got a SoundTouch and I've got a also a Echo. So there we go, I can say select my Echo and save that. So the beauty of that now is we can now control our Echo. We can select the volume and we can switch it on and off. So that is a sound card. There are other cards that you can use for cameras. There are all sorts of cards within Home Assistant that can allow you to view or control any of the devices within your Home Assistant. Just takes a little bit of figuring around, just a bit of playing around, and you'll be able to create a great custom dashboard. Now you can create multiple dashboards. So you might want to have one dashboard for your PC, another one for your phone, and another one for a tablet that you've got at the door. So there's all sorts of different tab or different dashboards that you can create. Anyway, that's all I'm going to show you today. It was a brief introduction to dashboards. The next one we'll be talking about is we'll be doing hacks install, and then I'll show you how to install some of the other custom cards, such as the Mashroom card. Anyway, that's all for now. Have a great week. Bye then.